the tin can antenna coupler in my last video worked but I didn't need it. I have too many other couplers already. So I decided to make it into another project. This is a magnetic loop that covers from 88 to about 180 megahertz. It is super simple. This is part of the original tin can antenna coupler. The outer part, as you can see here, and I just drilled a hole in the middle to accommodate a BNC socket. I have five centimeters of wire going to about 20 to 25 percent of the total circumference and across the ends I soldered a beehive trimmer. This might be the hardest to obtain part of the project but it goes from 5 to about 25 picofarad. Just to make the adjustment easier I've attached some 12 or 13 millimeter irrigation tubing that forms a snug fit and allows me to adjust it without physically touching the metal which is definitely an advantage with a magnetic loop antenna because of detuning. About 10 centimeters diameter, around 30 centimeters circumference. Let's try some air band reception. We're on 120.9. You can see the antenna is now resonant. You can see I can null the signal out almost to nothing. Now on the FM broadcast band and listening to 93.9 from Geelong, so that's across the bay. And terminate your hunger at your local Abco Cafe 24-7. Limited time only, so grab one today. The Laminated Burger, only at Abco Cafe 24-7. Surprisingly electric, meet the Skoda Electric range at Rex Garol Skoda and do your shopping run, your coffee run, surprisingly affordable from $49.99. Just to again give you an idea of how selective the loop is. is the noise from the camera. So with it like that, getting a bit of camera noise then it's less camera noise, but it's favorable for the beacon. I'll just move the camera further away.
I'd call it rich people just being stupid. And that, that's the scrags, the scrags, yep. Yeah. Um, well, um, in the latest episode of her, what well, we're going to call it the scrags from now on? Yeah, yeah, so her latest episode of Keeping Up with the Scrags. Now we're trying an RTL SDR. Possibly make. Just thought I'd do a quick test, just comparing it with, well, approximately a quarter wave length of wire hanging from the antenna socket here in the RTL, and roughly a similar strength with the wire, maybe a bit weaker. Just have the antenna inside on the bookshelf transmitting whisper on two meters. Here's a look at the results. Stations up to 20 kilometers distant and up to minus six. No doubt if the antenna was outside I'd get a longer range. So that's our tin can magnetic loop. It can be used on both receiving and transmitting. Not sure why do you use it for receiving on VHF, except maybe if you were in an apartment and you had a lot of RF noise, other interference, then just possibly the selective nature of this antenna may help. It, it may be able to reject some extraneous signals. Don't consider an antenna like this if you're looking for gain, even a half wave dipole would be better for that if you want even more gain then a small beam or a collinear vertical if you just want to receive well on a single band all them would be better options than this loop still it's an interesting experiment doesn't cost you anything and just gives you a bit of an idea for what you can do with magnetic loops on VHF Another possibility, if you've got several tins, then there's no, no doubt you can scale it up for six motors. So you could add you know, three or four tins and a commensurately bigger variable capacitor and it will work on six motors. If you have this every day, then who knows, you may be able to collect enough of these tin cans to solder them together and make an HF magnetic loop. Uh, maybe use a wooden frame. You do want it to be mechanically fairly stable, otherwise it will detune. But that is a possible experiment. Although it won't be as good as if you are using copper tubing, which will be more conductive. Still, it's a wide fat inductor, so it shouldn't be too bad. You could certainly make a multiple tin can magnetic loop for HF. Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good Antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books, Hand Carried QRP Antennas and More Hand Carried QRP Antennas. They're big sellers with favourable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.